Hi, my name is Dr. Vida Hamilton. I'm the National Clinical Lead for Sepsis and I'd like to introduce you to the National Sepsis Management Guidelines which have just been published. These guidelines are available on the hse.ie Sepsis Ireland website. Sepsis is when infection causes stimulation of the systemic inflammatory response. So this is a group of signs and symptoms such as a raised heart rate, a raised respiratory rate, a high or very low temperature, a raised white cell count or a reduced white cell count. Sugar can be increased and this is in a patient who isn't known to be diabetic and also it can cause confusion. The most common signs of sepsis uh, reported by patients who are survivors of severe sepsis and septic shock include slurred speech, lethargy, extreme fatigue, increased heart rate, increased respiratory rate and decreased urinary output, rigors or chills and also skin changes. So skin can be pale, cold or can be mottled with a, a, a mottling rash. Well, it's always a concern for people who are in their fluid resuscitating patients who are at risk of fluid overload. So patients such as uh, those with a history of congestive cardiac failure, or perhaps an anuric patient who's on intermittent uh, hemodialysis, or a patient with preeclampsia, these patients still need to be fluid resuscitated if they have severe sepsis septic shock. And following the principles outlined in the guidelines, fluid resuscitation can be given safely. The approach is to give a bolus of fluid over a given time period and reassess the patient after each bolus. On assessment, decide, is the patient still hypovolemic and therefore needs further fluid bolus? Are they fluid overloaded? and therefore you need to stop all fluid resuscitation and even consider diuretics if they have a normal blood pressure and a normal lactate. It's important not to give diuretics to a patient with persistent hypotension or a raised lactate even if they are overloaded. Consider non-invasive ventilation or even inv invasive ventilation if required. And then the other possibility is the patient is fluid replete You've now accomplished your goal and you don't need to give any more fluid boluses and just continue the patient on IV maintenance if they're fasting or normal diet if they're able to take normal diet and fluids. Patients can present very early on wherein the uh, signs of the systemic inflammatory response are subtle or they can be caused by mild uh, conditions that don't require antimicrobials and it's only as the disease process progresses that it becomes apparent that this is a, a severe infection leading to sepsis. So patients need to be carefully monitored with a system of regular review in, to ensure that you get adequate pickup. But there's another group of patients that can be difficult to diagnose. Patients who are elderly and the very young, and pa patients who are on medications that interfere with the immune system. These patients don't necessarily manifest a normal systemic inflammatory response. In fact, the elderly often present with reduced level of consciousness, and the young with lethargy and poor feeding. And the patients who are on immunosuppressive therapy aren't able to mobilize uh, a white cell count. So patients with this type of background, you need to very carefully examine and to take a good history in order to be able to pick up their sepsis. Well, antibiotic overuse is a concern because of sepsis being uh, this continuum that while on the one hand you want to pick people up early, if you over-prescribe antimicrobials to patients who don't require them, you're likely to increase the resistance in the population. So therefore, our guidelines recommend that sepsis only be diagnosed 
after a careful history and examination which is either proves or is suggestive of infection as a cause of the systemic inflammatory response. This also needs to be uh, followed up with the Start Smart and fo Then Focus Care Bundle which recommends that at 24 to 48 hours the patient is reviewed with the results of their investigations and their microbiological cultures and their antibiotics rationalised. If infection is not the cause or has been demonstrated not to be cause of the patient's problem, then antimicrobials should be stopped. And the narrowest uh, antimicrobial therapy appropriate for the uh, infection uh, should be administered. Sepsis is rare in maternity patients and its diagnosis can be made more difficult because the normal physiological effects of pregnancy can mimic some of the uh, systemic inflammatory response criteria. So we've modified um, some SERS criteria accepting a higher respiratory rate, a higher heart rate and a higher white cell count it recognising that these things happen in normal uh, pregnancy. So a patient, a, a maternity patient presenting with infection, we look for a heart rate greater than 100, a respiratory rate greater than 20, and a white cell count greater than 16.9 um, before we will be happy to diagnose sepsis. Apart from this uh, variation in the SERS criteria, the treatment of patients, uh, maternity patients with sepsis is according to the sepsis 6 uh, bundle.